Taylor, did you know that your credit score can impact your ability to buy a house? Yes, Elvis, I did. One person who knows a lot about helping people achieve the American dream and owning their own house is our next honoree, Larry Mizell. Mr. Mizell is not only successful in business, but is also dedicated to, to community service. For example, he helped save the Colorado State Fair Junior Livestock Sale, supporting Colorado's young farmers and ranchers as they showcase their livestock and earn money for college. Let's watch a video to learn a little more about Larry Mizell. What he does is just mind boggling. Few people have had more impact on the home building business than Larry Meisel. Since 1972, Larry's companies have built and financed the American dream for more than 175,000 home buyers nationwide. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I moved to Denver in 1965. I finished law school at uh, DU in 1967 and I was already in the real estate business and under construction of uh, a 10-story apartment building called the De Medici. It took him like five minutes to figure it all out and he was off doing apartments and that led to Richmond Homes. And they really recognized early on that people wanted to have a, a bigger house but further out of town. He, like Paul Revere, had a sense of what was coming. His wife, Carol, is at his side all the time. She's a designer and she's always on the cutting edge. A champion of charitable, religious, and community causes, Larry and Carol founded the Meisel Museum, now known as the Meisel Institute. And our focal point has been Bridges of Understanding, which is bringing people together of different races and different religions. It's his passion, his love, and every year you can expect a phone call. <laughs> and he's got a great uh, solicitation committee. The committee is comprised of Larry. <laughs> I don't know anyone who's put, invested the resources into uh, anti-terrorism programs. Uh, the cell national model for how to make people aware of, you know, the real risks around uh, terrorism. And that each of us have an opportunity and obligation to look after one another, that uh, no one can do it on their own. He is also one of the founders of the Simon Wiesenthal Center in Los Angeles, an international human rights organization combating racism and anti-Semitism. His investments uh, in Israel on building a museum of tolerance, uh, I mean, it's going to be one of the most amazing museums anybody's ever seen. He started the Rustlers, which is one of the great uh, business organizations that support the Colorado State Fair and the Colorado 4-H organizations. Larry's also a founding member of Colorado Concern. We organize and we lobby in behalf of the business sector. Never seen a guy that can squeeze so much into a day or into an agenda. He occasionally pulls himself away to, you know, for a friendly community poker game. You can always tell when he's got a couple of aces, the way he uh, bets. <laughs> Larry is also known for his legendary parties. I can remember the pajama party that we all dressed up like kids, even my father and mother, they dressed up in Florence Eisman clothes. Loves life, I think, and as you know, whether it's riding a, a big old Harley. Larry lives life in a big way, and he should. He's earned it. And I think the most important thought that I have for myself and for others is uh, don't ever, ever, ever give up. Please welcome Larry Mizell to the stage. Thank you very much for my friends, for being here this evening. 
Everything you saw that I got credit for, I was only a participant. I was just fortunate to be part of a lot of things that took place, and many of you here tonight were instrumental in making all those activities be important, and I feel fortunate that I was able to be part of everyone's endeavors. Robin Weiss, Junior Achievement. Wow, what great young kids. Kelly Bro, Denver Chamber, over the top. Does fabulous work and certainly deserves credit for this evening. My special partner, Carol Meisel of eh, plus or minus 45 years. We're working on the 46, we're doing okay. <laughs> Carol, I love you. Courtney Meisel, my youngest and oldest daughter who's here this evening. We're pleased to have you here, Courtney. In 1977, I first I started in Denver in 65 and 66. I did my first real estate transaction, which was a 10-story building, high-rise union. Of course, I didn't know how to read the plans, but the subcontractors didn't know that, and the bank gave me a loan, so it didn't matter. But in 77, that was in 66, I was fortunate enough uh, that my partner in building Richmond Homes and the person that runs it, 180, 85,000 homes, is here this evening, David Mandridge, with his wife, Bonnie David. Also at our table is the lead director of MDC, Herb Buckwald, the general counsel of MDC, Michael Tauf, and our new CFO, Bob Martin, all of which are here this evening, and our old CFO, Gary Reese, you know, we never let anyone go, is also here, and it's great that I'm part of such a great organization and uh, they've done such a good job uh, over, uh, you know, a long time. So as I was listening to everyone's comments, I said, you know, so far I think I'm the youngest one here, so, you know, I'm, I feel pretty good, you know. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but, you know, I'll take credit anyway. But, uh, so I want to go back. They said, you know, you've got two minutes, Larry, and those of you that know me, I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. It takes two minutes to say hello in Oklahoma. <laughs> like, how y'all doing? So I'll just take another two minutes. <sighs> and I'd like to make uh, what I think is relevant comments in today's world really very short. You know, in the turn of the century, almost 100 years ago, uh, my grandparents came from both Russia and Poland, and they had no education. They didn't have any money, and they were like young teenagers. And as they say, they came over in the boat th to Ellis Island. And when I think of it, it's pretty awesome, a hundred years ago. So my legacy starts in the fortune of being born in this country and having my grandparents have the privilege of immigrating to the United States of America. So I focus on Colorado, and I'm thinking of it. In the 30s and the 40s, both my grandmother and my mother had tuberculosis, and they came to Denver, what's now known as the National Jewish Hospital, in those days, it was known for the National Jewish for Consumptions. And here we are, all these years later, and I'm privileged to be here this evening, and I thank all of you for the opportunities that I've had in Denver, because without those opportunities, I wouldn't be able to be here tonight, and thank you very much. Thank you.